Good evening and Salam Malaysia Madani. You're watching Malaysia Tonight with me, Mohamed Amin Carlos. Well, Malaysia will spare no diplomatic effort in working with its partners to prevent the further massacre of civilians in Gaza. And there should be no doubt about the country's commitment. Speaking at the 14th ASEAN Law Association, ALA, General Assembly 2023 today, Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim said Malaysia believes in upholding international law and that security and prosperity are predicated on the primacy of the rules that govern the interactions between states. But it's hard to believe in its, in its sanctity when some nations have such a tenacious commitment to the iron fist of the occupation forces, brutal in their instincts, genocidal in their purpose, nefarious in their ends. Present were the Minister in the Prime Minister's Department for Law and Institutional Reform, Datu Sri Azalina Othman Said, and Chief Justice Tun Tengku Maimun Tuan Mat. On a related note, the Humanitarian Trust Fund for the People of Palestine, also known as AAKRP, which is managed by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, is approaching its target of collecting 100 million ringgit with 81 million ringgit raised so far. And this is according to the Prime Minister. While speaking at the handing over of donations to AAKRP today, Dr. Sri Anwar, who is also Finance Minister, said the huge collection raised within a short time reflected Malaysia's solidarity with the struggle of the Palestinian people. He gave assurances that the AAKRP would be channeled directly to obtain medicine, food, drink and basic facilities for the affected Palestinian people. Dan saya dari pihak kerajaan terharu dengan sambutan yang diberikan dalam masa yang singkat dengan penyaluran dana awal 10 juta kepada kerajaan kita dah dapat mengumpul 80 juta ringgit dan akan memenuhi Selamat ini saya umumkan peringkat awal 100 juta. Ini menunjukkan keprihatinan dan saya terima kasih bukan kepada hanya kepada syarikat-syarikat kerajaan tapi syarikat-syarikat swasta baik yang Muslim dan juga yang bukan Islam kerana isu ini isu peri kemanusiaan. The AAKRP fund was established following the recent conflict and violence in the Gaza Strip with the government having contributed 10 million ringgit to the fund. Among the biggest contributors to AAKRP today are Kazana National Burhan and government linked companies or GLCs amounting to 15 million ringgit, Al Bukhari Foundation 15 million ringgit and YTL Corporation Burhan 5 million ringgit. The latest fighting in Palestine involving Hamas, which is the authority in Gaza and the Israeli regime since 7 October has resulted in the loss of thousands of lives on both sides. And on to other local stories. Now the government will disperse the 100 ringgit e-wallet assistance to eligible recipients in December this year. And Deputy Finance Minister Stephen Sim Chi Kiong urged the public to be patient because the government will fulfill its promise in implementing the initiative. Well, according to him, the impact of the initiative is not limited to the recipient's households, but also extended to the local market, especially small traders and hawkers. The Prime Minister, Dr. Sri Anwar Ibrahim, announced the 100 ringgit e-wallet assistance to be credited to all Malaysians aged 21 and above at the launch of the Madani economy, empowering the people on 27th July. The e-wallet assistance is the latest government initiative for the B40 and M40 groups with incomes below 100,000 ringgit. On another note, he said the Sumbangan Asas Rahma, or SARA 2024, that was announced in the budget 2024 would benefit 700,000 Rahma cash assistance or SDR recipients. He said eligible recipients would receive a monthly contribution of 100 ringgit for a period of 12 months. Well, the date for prices of chicken and egg to be floated in the market is expected to be announced during a press conference on 30th October. Agriculture and Food Security Minister Dr. Sri Mohamed Sabu said discussions and meetings were being held with the stakeholders and industry players involved in production of chicken and eggs. <laughs> Jalan 
dan pihak KSU sedang memainkan peranan untuk buat pertemuan supaya harga nanti uh, dapat berada dalam keadaan yang tidak uh, naik begitu mendadak. The minister was speaking to reporters at the pre-launch of the 2023 national level farmers, livestock breeders and fishermen day celebration today. He added that the media conference to announce the date would comprise the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Economy and Department of Statistics Malaysia. Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim, when tabling the Malaysia Madani budget 2024 last week, announced that the temporary price controls for eggs and chicken would be lifted to enable the local market to function freely in ensuring sufficient supply of both the products. Coming up in our business segment, AP systems should be maintained to ensure inclusive industry development. Well, the government will focus on developing affordable artificial intelligence or AI technologies for the plantation and commodities industry to help smallholders increase their income. Well, Deputy Prime Minister Dr. Sri Fadila Yusuf said this is one of the government's focus uh, towards automation and mechanization in the field of plantation, considering the ability of the target group to adapt to the new technology. Dato Sri Fadila said nowadays several large companies are already using AI technologies and have benefited in terms of tax incentives. Drone dah digunakan untuk uh, menyebut baja dan racun mm -hmm. uh, tapi belum dalam keadaan penuaian. Jadi penuaian kita kena menggunakan uh, robot uh, yang mana robot itu nanti dengan AI yang di, dibangunkan akan dapat mengenal pasti buah-buah yang cukup matang untuk dipetik dan bagaimana keedah untuk memetik dan juga pruning proses dan sebagainya. Bukan saja. Dr. Sri Fadela said the use of AI technologies would be able to reduce dependence on foreign and manual labor in the plantation and commodities industry. He added the use of the technology with reasonable operating costs will be able to help farmers and state owners who have aged and are unable to spend more time in the field but are still able to manage their land. Well, the import license or approved permit, or commonly known as the AP system for motor vehicles, must be maintained so that priority is given to the local industry in ensuring an inclusive automotive industry development in line with the aspirations of the National Automotive Policy 2020. Investment Trade and Industry Minister Tenku Dr. Sri Zafrul Tenku Abdulaziz said it will also curb the dumping of completely built up or CBU imports, including electric vehicles or EVs, which do not comply with the safety standards for road users. Tenku Datu Sri Zafrul said the move to issue AP on CBU imports is still relevant and must be maintained due to additional justifications. Pansuhan AP boleh mendorong kepada pengimportan atau lambakan kenderaan CBU yang tidak mematuhi perayawan teknikal dan membahayakan pengguna kenderaan di jalan raya dan Mekanisme AP adalah bertujuan untuk membangunkan industri otomotif secara inklusif yang merangkumi agenda meningkatkan pelibatan usahawan bumi putera dalam rantaian bekalan industri otomotif. The number of EVs registered in Malaysia from 2011 till September this year, specifically for battery electric vehicles including all types of commercial vehicles and motorcycles, reached 12,000 units. Well, the introduction of targeted subsidies is able to drive the interest of electric vehicle or EV ownership in the country. Natural Resources, Environment and Climate Change Minister Nick Nazmi Nick Ahmad said when there is targeted subsidy based on household income, users will have to pay the actual cost of fuel and most probably many of the road users will switch to EV. According to Nick Nazmi, the EV sector in China expanded rapidly when users have to pay the real cost of fuel. Well, he further said there is a need to review the EV target of 1.5 million by 2040 so as to be more aggressive to ensure the country achieves a more meaningful objective. I agree that we should look at the numbers that we have done. The numbers are changing and we should look at the numbers that we have done. Mungkin kita perlu letak satu uh, sasaran yang lebih tinggi 
untuk kita dapat capai matlamat kita secara bermakna dan saya rasa betul cabaran yang kita hadapi dalam bidang sektor EV ini dia ada pelbagai kementerian dan agensi tetapi the lead agency ialah MITI dan sekarang di bawah kerajaan yang baru MITI juga telah naik taraf the EV task force. Nick Nazmi also said the approval process for electric vehicle charging station projects will be expedited to increase the number of EV users. Well, Tesla enthusiasts now have an alternative option to Model Y. And the electric car manufacturer today unveiled the new Model 3 in the nation's capital. The launch was officiated by Local Government Development Minister Nga Ko Ming and Tesla Regional Director Isabel Fan. The official event also saw the opening of Tesla's first flagship experience centre in Malaysia at Pavilion Damansara Heights. Officiating the centre, Nga expressed his excitement and welcomed Tesla's expansion into Malaysia. He hoped Malaysia would become the second mega factory for electric vehicle or EV manufacturers in Asia. We are aiming to set up 10,000 EV charging station in our country and we need to work very hard as time is running. By 2025, we need to have 10,000 EV charging station. To date, Tesla has two supercharging stations at Pavilion Kuala Lumpur and Sunway Big Box in Johor. Fans said the construction of more supercharging stations across Malaysia is in the planning. While Tesla will also be having additional charging stations at Pavilion Damansara Heights to create a one-stop destination for customers. Well, Malaysia has called for initiatives that boost tourism recovery and promote high-value investment in Asia be given top priority as a tourism recovery in the region remains a year behind other regions. Well, Tourism, Arts and Culture, or MOTEC Minister Dato Sri Tiong King Singh said Malaysia made the call at the two-day 25th World Tourism Organization or UNWTO General Assembly in Samarkand, Uzbekistan, which began yesterday. Well, Dato Sri Tiong, who led the Malaysian delegation, said the call was vital to further enhance the UNWTO draft program of work for 2024-2025. Well, he said Malaysia also welcomed UNWTO's 15 flagship initiatives as new opportunities to collaborate, particularly in areas of global sustainability certification and measurement tools such as measuring the sustainability of tourism, or MST, and the environmental, social, and governance, or ESG, framework for tourism business. On behalf of Malaysia, who is also extending appreciation to the UNWTO for its close partnership in various high-level and technical committees, workshops, conferences and capacity building programs that have given tremendous value to member states. The 25th session of the Assembly shines the spotlight on UNWTO's two main pillars of investment and education with the Global Investments and Education Forum also being held in conjunction with the event. Well, micro, small and medium enterprises or MSMEs are encouraged to embrace digitalization in closing the gap to upgrade their business processes and improve their operations. Now, SME Corporation Malaysia or SME Corp Chief Executive Officer or CEO Rizal Naini said according to recent findings conducted by the corporation, that more than 80% of MSMEs were computerized in which they own gadgets to complement their business operations. However, he said when it comes to back-end digitalization, which is the system itself, it is still at 50%, which means there is a gap for MSMEs to upgrade their business processes in terms of digitalization. The SME Corp CEO noted that to achieve higher productivity, MSMEs must learn to embrace digitalization so that they are able to do better. Well, he said this as a panelist in the Unlocking Opportunities, Exploring Funding Options and Grants for SME Growth panel session. A part of the 8th Selango Smart City and Digital Economy Convention, or SDEC, organized in conjunction with the 7th edition of the Selango International Business Summit, or SIBS, by the Selango Information Technology and Digital Economy Corporation. 
Well, Malaysia's exports in September increased by 8.2% to 124.47 billion ringgit as compared with August, while imports expanded by 2.1% to 99.95 billion ringgit, resulting in the total trade increasing by 54% month on month to 224.43 billion ringgit. Now, the Ministry of Investment, Trade and Industry said the trade surplus registered a double digit growth of 42.7% to 24.52 billion ringgit, making it the 41st consecutive month of trade surplus since May 2020. Now, the ministry said compared to September last year, exports were lower by 13.7% and imports edged down by 11.1% amid slower global demand, uncertainties in commodity prices, and high base effect. Subsequently, total trade was lower by 12.6%. Now, the ministry added the performance was similar to Malaysia's major trading partners, notably South Korea, China, China, Taiwan and Indonesia, which recorded negative trade growth for September this year and a drop in their global imports. Meanwhile, trade for the third quarter of this year increased by 1.6% to 653.57 billion ringgit compared with the previous quarter. Now, the ministry said exports grew by 2.2% to 356.31 billion ringgit. Imports expanded by 0.8% to 297.26 billion ringgit. And trade surplus rose by 9.6% to 59.06 billion ringgit, respectively. Invest Selangor Burhad has officially kicked off the seventh edition of the Selangor International Business Summit, or SIBS 2023, today, targeting 1.5 billion ringgit worth of potential negotiated sales during the four day event. Well, Selangor Minister Basar, Dr. Sri Amiruddin Shari, said he's confident the summit will be an opportunity to discover new areas, whether in innovation or technology, with the investments being instrumental to allow the young generation to have a brighter future. I'm very confident that we can reach uh, 1.5 billion uh, within two, three days. And from the agreement that we uh, we, 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 we see, uh, we uh, become the witness of understanding just now, there's also reaching more than 1.2 already. 1.2 billion as long as the agreement in front of me so i think within uh, 48 hours that we can reaching more than 1.5 or maybe minimum 1.5 billion SIBS 2023 features six core components and five exciting events held in parallel with the main programs. Invest Salango, in a statement, said SIBS 2023 also sees greater participation compared to the previous year's editions, uh, totaling 1,006 booths altogether, with events being held in all eight expo halls and seven conference halls at the KL Convention Center. It added SIBS 2023 will continue its role as the regional premier summit for local and international industry players to convene and explore the great potential of the Malaysian and regional markets. Labuan's vast untapped economic potential can be realized by focusing on efforts to attract investments and streamline processes to boost its economy. Labuan Chamber of Commerce or LCC Secretary Raymond Pang said a highly effective approach to realizing this goal is to entice foreign investments resulting in employment opportunities for the locals, which would not only stimulate economic growth but also create a more skilled workforce. Now, Pang said to turn this vision into a tangible reality, Labuan must undertake several pivotal actions, including transforming into a free trade or commercial zone. Well, he said the move would facilitate trade, attract international investors and help the island replicate Penang's success in terms of attracting foreign direct investments, job creation and export growth. Now, at the same time, Pang highlighted the need to streamline approval processes, noting that Labuan has a large number of government departments, leading to bureaucratic challenges and delays. Well, he said setting up a one-stop center for investors can reduce red tape and decision-making delays, making the island more business-friendly. He also stressed the urgent need to improve basic utilities, saying that the persistent disruptions in power and water supply have negatively impacted local businesses. Well, the current monetary policy stance remains accommodative and supportive of the economy in tandem with the assessment of the inflation and growth. 
prospects. Now, the financial sector is envisaged to remain resilient and stable, driven by a robust ranking system which continues to support financial intermediation activities, benefiting from positive growth projections and Im improving labor market. Simultaneously, the capital market remains vibrant in fostering Malaysia's prosperity, inclusivity and sustainability by leveraging thought leadership, intensifying innovation and diversifying the market's range of products to remain competitive. Now, going forward, the Malaysia's Capital Market Master Plan 2021-2025 and Financial Sector Blueprint 2022-2026 will continue to serve as invaluable guiding documents, setting forth the visions and strategies for the development of the capital market and financial sector. On another note, towards achieving an inclusive and sustainable economic growth, a series of measures have also been laid to focus on sustainable fiscal conditions, right yet to well being, effective disaster risk management, and high impact investments. In improving the well being of the Rakyat, the government remains steadfast in its commitment to fortify and target social assistance programs, particularly for the vulnerable groups. Now, the entails enhancing existing initiatives such as cash transfers, in-kind assistance, subsidies, as well as income protection and retirement programs. Now, furthermore, social insurance programs will undergo enhancements to expand coverage, guaranteeing that Malaysians accumulate sufficient retirement savings, while efforts will also be continued to strengthen labor market interventions through retraining programs, hence safeguarding employment prospects for workers amid adverse circumstances. Now, the overaching goals is to maintain an inclusive and equitable social protection system that shields the riot from the burdens of rising living costs and over uh, rather unforeseen hardships. Now, these measures reflect the government's commitment to deliver social protection more efficiently and cohesively, ensuring cost effectiveness while minimizing fragmentation and the likelihood of inclusion and exclusion errors. Well, China's gross domestic product or GDP growth in the third quarter of this year signaled that its economic recovery is gaining traction, and this will support the trade outlook for Malaysia. Now, in a note issued today, MIDF Research said China's third quarter GDP data, which grew 4.9% in July to September for a year earlier, was better than expected, and further recovery will definitely benefit its trading partners. Now, in addition to improvement in external trade, MIDF research opines that China can still achieve its annual growth target of 5% this year, given the stronger than expected growth in the third quarter. Well, elaborating further, MIDF research believes that trading regional countries will benefit from the pickup in demand from China, which will also support trade outlook for Malaysia. Now, nevertheless, the research house said it remained cautious that the ongoing challenges in the property market will be one of the downside risks which could affect China's near-term growth outlook. At least 40 killed as Israel continues pounding Gaza. That and more coming up. But at least more than 40 Palestinians, including children, were killed early today as Israeli warplanes continued to hit the Gaza Strip for a 13th consecutive day. Now, state news agency Wafa reported that at least nine people were killed, including seven children, when fighter jets struck a house in Khan Yunus, south of Gaza City. Now, several people reportedly remained trapped under the rubble, while another child was also killed in an Israeli air raid west of Khan Yunus. Witnesses said at least more than 30 Palestinians were also killed and dozens injured in Israeli airstrikes in Rafah in the southern Gaza Strip. A Palestinian baby lost his life and several people were injured in an airstrike in the Nusirat refugee camp in central Gaza. Gaza is experiencing a dire humanitarian crisis with no electricity, while water, food, fuel and medical supplies are running out. United Nations Secretary General 
Antonio Guterres has called for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire to ease the epic human suffering. At least more than 3,000 Palestinians have been killed and more than 12,000 injured in Israeli attacks on Gaza. Around half of Gazans have been made homeless, still trapped inside the enclave, one of the most densely populated places on Earth. Well, the United States has broadly eased sanctions on Venezuela's oil sector in response to a deal reached between the government and opposition parties for the 2024 election. Well, a new general license issued by the U.S. Treasury Department authorized OPEC member Venezuela, which had been under crushing sanctions since 2019 to produce and export oil to its chosen markets for the next six months without limitation. Now, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken welcomed President Nicolas Maduro's electoral concessions, but said Washington has given him until the end of November to begin lifting bans on opposition presidential candidates and start releasing political prisoners. Now, the U.S. moves follow months of negotiations in which Washington had pressed Caracas for concrete actions towards democratic elections in return for lifting some, but not all, of the tough sanctions imposed under former U.S. President Donald Trump. Now, it also represents a significant step in the increased engagement of President Joe Biden's administration with Maduro on issues ranging from energy to migration. Next up in sports, Asian Games Review, workshop to improvise and prepare athletes for future games. Well, the National Sports Council, or NSC, will hold an Asian Games Performance Review workshop with relevant stakeholders on 8th November as part of preparations for upcoming international games. Now, Youth and Sports Minister Hannah Yeo said the workshop will also involve experts from Nippon Sports Science University. Well, elaborating further on the matter, the minister said the same post-mortem workshop was held for the 2023 Cambodia Sea Games as well to improve its existing program. Well, she said all of the countries athletes had shown exceptional performance at the Hangzhou Asian Games in their events and that success was achieved as a result of prior preparations. Well, she said at the Hangzhou Games, the Malaysian contingent of 288 athletes had successfully won six gold medals, eight silver medals and 18 bronze medals. Now, regarding the winability of the athletes at the 2022 Hangzhou Asian Games, Hannah concluded that among other factors, the success could be attributed to prior competition exposure and training thanks to allocations from the NSC involving an expenditure of 9.4 million ringgit. Well, she added that it covered 119 competition exposures abroad and 41 training exposures that were given to athletes. Well, that concludes this evening's Malaysia Tonight. A reminder of our top story. No diplomatic effort will be spared to prevent civilian massacre. Do tune in to World Today coming up tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. on TV2. Till then, I'm Muhammad Amin Carlos. Malaysia Madani, Takat Perpaduan, Banuhi Harapan. Thanks for watching. Good night.